What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today, I want to talk about the Gecko Trading Bot and how to avoid missing trades, dealing with rejected trades, and using PM2 to restart Gecko. So, earlier this week, I actually wrote a pretty long post on uh, the Gecko forums explaining what I experienced with rejected trades. Rejected sell trades, that's why I said anyway, can lose 10% of your portfolio. You can read this post in detail, but I'll explain it generally what happened to me anyway. So this issue actually specifically affects people that use this Coinbase Pro with Gecko, but it can affect anyone, it can affect other exchanges as well. It just depends on how the setup is. But anyway, let me go into the reason why this can lose you a lot of money. So let's pretend I'm the Gecko trading bot and I'm actually interacting with the Coinbase Pro exchange. Let's say I'm buying into Ethereum like here, and you see that there's a lot of volatility going on. A lot of the prices can changing, fluctuating very quickly. This is where the problem comes in, though. So let's say I put in a price of 1178 right now. It already changed already. So, but I, let's say I got the price back from the exchange. It says to me 1178 is the price that I can uh, buy that would put me at the top of the order book. So I try to do that. So I have 1178. But now when I try to put that into the top order book, it'll actually put me onto the buy side of things. I mean, it'll actually put me on the sell side of things and actually will reject the trade. So essentially, it'll look something like this. I'm just going to put in a number actually on the other side. Let's say 118.80. So that'll, be, that'll put me on the sell side on the, on the sell side of the order book, right? And then let's say I say put max on it. And you see actually the price changing. It can dropping because the price can fluctuating. So I got to make sure I put a little higher. So just because... Again, pretending this is a pretend situation, but this is what's really happening that causes these rejected trades. So if I put it in at let's say eighty nine, okay, well, it wouldn't be, it would, first of all, I could get the insufficient funds, but that's another different error. But more likely, you see something like this. I adjust the max because one eighty nine, one eighteen eighty nine is low. Uh, you have to readjust the price of it. So let's say I adjust the price again, and actually again, I <laughs> before I buy it because one eighteen that will actually again because how. How much um, the price was fluctuating you see that that's actually on the buy side of the order book again it is ridiculously volatile right now that's usually again what when this issue happens let's just gonna put a really high up there like 11 19 90 readjust the price and then what happens now <clears throat> that's the error this is the error that gecko would get like if you <clears throat> try to put in this trade you get a rejected trade again this is happening because the price Gecko got back, change from the moment it got back to the moment it actually issues back out to the exchange. This is talking about like seconds, but you, as you can see here, the price ch changes within fractions of seconds. So <clears throat> within the seconds, the price change, and when we try to issue the order back out, when Gecko tried to issue the order back out, the price went to the sell side of the order book, and now got, you got a rejected message. So the trade got rejected. You got an error message say post only cannot place order at 119.9. So what does Gecko do next? It reports it on the console. So you go into my um, forum post right here and you'll see it. It says status change rejected. So it reports it. But that's it. Now it doesn't do anything else at all. It doesn't retry the trade. It doesn't do anything at all. It just reports it. And one other thing you do get as a note, like some if you actually added some other things to like maybe track, the, maybe a blotter or something to track the trade itself, you might get something stored in here where it says 1969 December 31st, or it could be 1970 January 1st, knowing that obviously is the wrong date. That's because that's not the date you trade on, obviously. Those two dates are pretty much like the blue screen of death for Windows 95, if you guys remember that back in the day. So, because this means, I mean, the thing is, Gecko hasn't crashed though. That's the thing. It's not like blue screen of death for Windows where the system crashed and you need to reboot it. Gecko is still running fine. Problem is, your trade didn't execute. So, but this is like a really dreaded issue too. Even though Gecko is still running, it's still a dreaded issue because your portfolio. So, if it's a buy order, it's not that big a deal. It's an opportunity loss. So, if the prices go up from this point on, you just missed out on that opportunity. But if it was a sell side of things, if it was a sell trade that your strategy issued out to get you out of that position, you are now totally screwed. You could be losing 10% overnight if it was a really bad drop all of a sudden. 
So we're talking about like let's say um, Ethereum went from like one nineteen to like one hundred eight or one hundred seven. That's like ten percent drop. You can lose ten percent of your portfolio overnight for something that all because Gecko didn't retry a rejected trade. That's all it was, and that's. I had it happen to me once, and I didn't really think that much about it back then. Again, I had a small amount trading around. It was about, you know, it wasn't that much. So, and I did lose about like probably close to 10%, if I remember correctly. But you basically don't want this to happen at all. You want to make sure that Gecko retries to trade. There's two ways to fix this issue. The quick way to fix it. It's really it's just um going to the GDAX file gdax.js and if you go into here there is something called a post only flag. So what this does me is if you set this to true, what it does now is if you try to buy uh onto the sell side of the order book, let's say that you're trying to put a, a, a order or buy order at 119.24, it'll let you it'll just let you buy uh, uh, from the from the sellers on the order book. So now it's no longer a limit order, it's now a market order and you are going to be charged a commission for executing that trade. But your trade won't get rejected. So essentially this will fix the issue for you because you no longer get rejected trade. That's the easy, easy fix. So if you don't want to dive into the code, you could definitely do that. But if you do want to dive into the code, it's it's not, well, it's, it's quite a bit, but let's just look into it. I'll show you what I change so what I did here is in the check order function and this is where gecko checks to whether or not to uh, checks to find out what happened to the order so it, it sends order to exchange now it gets back it gets back a response from the exchange and then and then the exchange that responses could be any one of these things like pending it could be done or settled which is the same thing or it could be rejected the other one is obviously open and active so if it's rejected, what I did was I added this whole section right here, which checks if, if the rejected reason is post only. So meaning you only have a limit order, not a limit slash market order if you set post only to false, I mean post only to true. What you have to do now is in the rejected section, have in my way, the way I did it and the way I described it in the forum post is to have the strategy retry, uh, not so much retry the trade, because if you say, let's say, I want to retry the trade, you, you send it back to the exchange, you say, hey, I want to retry that trade again because um, I, I, I put in the wrong price. I want to retry the trade again. The exchange is going to tell, it's going to send back a message saying, hey, your trade, it doesn't exist. We never got it. Because once a trade gets a rejected status, it gets deleted from the exchange side, at least for Coinbase Pro. So you can't retry a trade that isn't there. And that's the problem. So what actually you need to do is have Gecko reissue a new trade. This is a starting point. So here is where you actually capture the fact that the trade got rejected. And then you will send this message to your strategy. And your strategy would then have to issue a sell order. If it was a buy trade, it would have to issue a sell order to basically reset Gecko. And then um, put a new buy order back in and have that order hopefully go through this time. So that's <laughs> the idea with this rejected trade setup. So uh, if you guys want to look through it, look through the code. I mean, it's all in the forum post. So hopefully this will help you guys with the rejected trades. At least the ones that I have experienced uh, on Coinbase Pro. This should hopefully fix that issue. So that's one thing. <clears throat> the other thing is even if you take care of the rejected trades, there are still times when Gecko doesn't issue the trades properly at all. As I can show you in this output file, the basic log file right here, where you can see that I have this advice equal long, and then so basically I want to buy, right? So the advice is to buy into the market. And then Gecko saying, oh, I'm ignoring the advice, already canceling previous undefined order. So basically, it doesn't know, there was a previous order that I was trying to cancel, but it doesn't know the side. It doesn't know if it was a buy or sell side. It doesn't know. For some reason, that message, that variable got lost. What that means is, the next trade of IC equals short also gets canceled. So it doesn't, it doesn't get processed again. So, and you look through it over 
and over and over again all these trades were cancel 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 basically none of my trades were going through the whole entire time so this is a huge issue gecko is basically not working right now so what can you do about this basically so if the gecko is just like it's not it's ignoring the, the trade advice that your strategy is sending out what can you do about this i mean obviously you can restart gecko manually and have it process through and uh, hopefully clear out this undefined variable but there's a way to do it automatically at least this is how I'm setting it up to do it so first thing you need to do is actually find where um, this is happening the ignoring advice already canceling you need to find where that's happening and that just so happened to be at trader.js so inside trader.js uh, inside the process advice section so this is where actually gecko ignores some advice so let's say that if it was a canceling a previous trade like it has here ignoring advice already canceling previous trade so what i did here is actually i just added these throw statements so wherever i wanted to restart basically in a sense so what i would do is i say throw and what throw does is basically it would just exit out of gecko literally gecko will stop working or stop running so it will just exit out gecko will stop running and that doesn't restart um gecko but what you can do is combine this with something called PM2. PM2 is basically a way to um, for you to manage uh, different uh, and run multiple applications in the background. My knowledge is relatively limited to PM2. I only really heard about it from the forum post from certificate um, on, on Gecko forums a while back actually. And I didn't really use it that often until now because I really have a purpose for it now. And one feature about PM2 is that anything gets a stop. Let's say that's for whatever reason, the, the process you have running crashes. It automatically restarts it for you. So, and that's basically what I'm doing here. So I'm having Gecko crash out when I uh, issue a throw message. So once it crashes out, I have PM2 will automatically restart it for me and hopefully clear out these error messages. So basically the undefined orders It'll clear it out and Gecko will uh, start processing trades properly. So instead of ignoring advice, it'll actually process this long trade and actually submit a buy order to the exchange. So that's the general idea and that's how I would say you could use PM2 for. But one thing about PM2 is that it does use uh, quite a bit more memory than just running Gecko without PM2. So if you're running it on a virtual machine and it doesn't have a lot of memory, like especially the ones where you know you're paying like let's say three or four dollars very small amount um, online to have a virtual machine set up for gecko those have very little memory we're talking about like 512 megs maybe a gig if you're lucky and pm2 requires um probably let's say i would say almost twice as much maybe a little bit less than twice as much for each gecko session that you have running so you can't run as many instances of gecko on that same virtual machine if you have pm2 installed but at the same time, at least it gives you a way to restart Gecko and clear out the errors that Gecko is having automatically. The bottom line is this. Gecko is an open source software with one developer. Really, it's just one developer. It's really just Axe Mike. He's the one that's the sole developer. I mean, I'm, I'm probably one of the 187 contributors that contribute code to it. But Axe Mike, he's the one that actually have to merge all these pull requests into the code to fix the bugs that we find or issue or features that we want to add to Gecko. If he's busy working on something else, it's like he has been, because you can see the last commit was nine days ago. Some issues just won't get fixed, right? Like not right away anyway. So we're talking about like, this bound, basically there's bound to be errors and issues that can take months to fix. Literally the rejected trade issue that I'm talking about, people noticed it and didn't really understand how to fix it. Going back to like when Gecko 0.6 came out, so which was like last year back in June, July roughly, we're talking about like six months already and that, that issue hasn't really been fixed. So I quote unquote made a rough fix on the forum post and people can use that to try to fix the issue. But really, if you're experiencing any trade execution issue, you really have to make that your top priority to try to fix the issue yourself. It's your money. So if you're using Gecko to trade live, it's your money that you're, you're trading with. So you want to make sure that Gecko executes the trade every single time. 
even if you don't know how to fix that issue. Issuing a throw and having PM2 restart Gecko. Let's show, let's show you guys right there. That just to clear out the error. I mean, that will help a lot because at least the bot can continue trading properly, hopefully. So again, that's something that I haven't completely tested, but something that's very simple to do as long as you know where the error is. If you don't know, just do a search within that whole that folder. You should be able to find where that, that error message came from and just issue the old messages from there. That's one way to kind of fix the issue. So that's pretty much my video for today, guys. Just want to point out a couple of things. So I have someone mentioned to me about freak trade, which is like frequency trade. I'm probably going to try to check it out as well. This basically is another crypto trading bot, another open source crypto trading bot. But this one runs on Python. So I want to see how that works. It seems pretty interesting. It's like another bot that actually uses a Telegram to let you issue trades and stuff like that. The other thing is I'm on Patreon, as I mentioned, every week. Definitely support me if you like the content I put out. And for my supporters, I put up an article once a month describing the different strategies I have to try to make money with cryptocurrency during this crypto bear market. So if you guys are interested, check it out. Patreon.com slash Crypto49er. One of the things I want to point out, I mean, if you guys are leaving comments on the videos, I might not actually see all of them just because YouTube has some funny issues with um, sending me notifications about comments. So the best way to get... To, uh, get through to me is either on the forums or on Twitter at Crypto49er so that you can uh, let me know. So in fact, the guy that let me know about Freak tw uh, Trade, he actually told me about it on Twitter. If you want to reach out, definitely reach out on Twitter. So, but that's it for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining. It isn't worth speculating. Peace out.